You're listening to Fabulosity, in which we discuss what you bring to the tea party, essentials for the modern heroine. I'm Caroline from Sparkles and Crops. And I'm Zandra from Fashionably Light. I am recording. Welcome to this week's episode, episode eight, in which we discuss getting red carpet ready. Um, so essentially, we both love dressing up. And we appreciate beautiful dresses and good style. <laughs> and the Oscars are this weekend. Exactly. It's a timely episode. Yes. <laughs> Obviously, the reason we timed it so is because the Oscars are coming up, which is all Yay. very exciting. So we have a lot of time to ogle the red carpet. Mm-hmm. But before we get on to more of that, Zandra, what is fabulous in your life today? Well... Um, hopefully other people will find this fabulous as well, but the new season of Survivor started yesterday. And while there isn't very much fabulous or glamorous about a bunch of people cast away on an island, um, having to make fire on the ground, um, it was quite fabulous to watch it from the comfort of my living room with popcorn. I've never seen that show. It's really good. Should I? I Um, I don't know if it, it's not everyone's thing, but I get really into the whole, um, strategy and uh challenges mind games <laughs> mind games yeah you might like the mind games but like <laughs> i say there there isn't very much fabulosity in um in island life it's not the kind of island life you've been experiencing lately. <laughs> it's not that idyllic <laughs> <laughs> that's a beautiful thing i remember having just dis- maybe it was with you Zandra. i can't remember i have a discussion with a lot of people that you can be interested in all kinds of cultures. You can be interested in high culture or low culture or a mix of both. And it's a good thing. Yeah. It's good to read flipping Rilke and also watch reality shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what is fabulous in your life? Oh, well, my, well I just got back from holiday, mm-hmm. which is, is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got back from gorgeous sunshine and the beach and beautiful meals and exploring this gorgeous island. And now I'm back in the rain in my office. So what I've done is I love the Canaries. I think they're gorgeous islands. So next week I'm having a Kaz Recreates the Canaries party. Oh, that's quite fabulous. So we're making those of tapas and paella and we're having strawberry champagne carver sangria and putting on Spanish music and just trying to like magic myself back there, but with people I love. <laughs> oh, that's so nice because your your Instagram was quite gloating. I know, I and love now it. You're sharing I, it with everyone. I'm terrible. I, I feel like well, people <laughs> always put up a happy holiday picture and like, oh, having such a great time, and they're really hoping people will be like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it over me. I'm awful. Yeah, yours were like. <laughs> Tuesdays are hard. <laughs> Sitting with well, an ocean view with a cocktail. Well, I make Michael, my poor boyfriend, take the pictures. He's like, you realise people start doing this to you? I was like, yes, but I go on more holidays, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but this is nice. You get to, after people have, have wished they were you, now they get to share that with you, with your <laughs> cast party. I hope so. It'll be fun. It's nice having, well, I'm booking a holiday of everyone, so that'll be good fun. Yay. Getting everyone along, dragging them into the sun. It'll be good. <laughs> so before we'll we transition into summer too much. Yeah. <laughs> shall we talk about the peak of the winter season that is the Oscars? Yes. Definitely. Even though it's in March now. Well, it still, still feels like flipping winter here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so my cousin actually the other day bought me a gorgeous book as a belated Christmas present, mm-hmm. which is Fabulous Frocks by Sarah Gristwood and Jane Easto. And it's beautiful. It's this gorgeous hardback celebration of the last hundred years of dresses. And they have a great quote in there. I know he's, you know, not in the highest favour at the moment, understandably, John Galliano, but he did make beautiful dresses. And his quote is, the perfect dress is more loyal than the perfect man on the red carpet. A great dress can make you look and feel amazing, bring you out of your shell and make you all the things you hope you are. Which I love. It's very true. true. (laughs) I heard that black tie was invented so that women could be the star of the of the show. (gasps) <gasps> I love that. <laughs> I, um, I'm not sure if there's a source behind that, but it makes sense. That does. Do you reckon that's true? Should I Google it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll put it in the notes. Yes. Find yeah. out. I, 
if that's true. Speak that out later. But yeah, so men could be sort of a canvas for women to be um, creative and flouncy. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. <laughs> Putting men well, so, in their place. Well, so what is your favorite red carpet look then? I like um, the more quirky ones. Mm-hmm. I know that that's a shocker. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I figured you would probably bring up the classic ones. Am I right? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, I have my list here. So um, I discovered the swan dress of um, Bjork. It's amazing. Yeah, you have to just, we'll, we'll put a picture of this up in the show notes. But also, amazingly, it has its own Wikipedia page this dress the dress does Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's basically a a dress that that's shaped like a swan and the head sort of goes around her neck like a scarf um it's very cool and very um daring very different (laughs) daring yeah like no one's no one else is gonna have a swan dress on the red carpet Um, it's like lady gaga wearing meat mm, i mean i feel that's that's cool that's less aesthetically appealing, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is quite a classy swan dress. And it had, um, I think it was Valentino who sort of recreated it for one of his recent collections. I love that. It was a, cla- it was a classy swan dress, as swan dresses go. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the swan dresses on the high street, this was like above board. <laughs> right, yeah. On a scale from one to swan dress. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I've also been really impressed with Haley Steinfeld, um, the young actress who was in True Grit, and for her debut season on the red carpet, she was always very fashion conscious, but I think also very, um, she would always dress to her age, which is something that a lot of young actresses don't do. She collaborated with Marquesa to make her Oscar dress for when she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and she made this beautiful princess dress that looked totally um totally appropriate and really elegant and then i um was googling pictures of this and apparently after the oscar ceremony she changed from her nice heels into like bright red converse just for like her leading photos <laughs> i thought that was cool well, did you see emma thompson go on stage recently i can't remember which event but she went on stage yes, Golden and took off her heels and were like oh they just bloody hurt <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's true. That was fabulous. Well, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, I don't. I think in Oxford it's a little bit different. Um, you may you may have to elaborate on this, but in Cambridge, after the exams in June, there is May Week. It's mm. called May Week because Cambridge is ridiculously idiosyncratic, <laughs> and every <laughs> single one of like the thirty-two colleges has a ball or a June event which is pretty much Mm -hmm. black tie and ridiculously over the top. And, you know, you kind of queue up outside at nine and you go in and you have unlimited food and unlimited drink and bands like, you know, Florence and the Machine play and it goes until six in the morning when you take your survivor's photo. So kind of walking along, going into the queue for all of these is like a red carpet. Yeah. It's amazing. But also, I've gone to some of these events in heels and after about an hour, mm-hmm. you take them off. <laughs> like you are walking around <laughs> and dancing all night. You cannot be wearing heels. So I always try to go for very yeah. long dresses that hide the fact that I'm usually walking around in flat shoes. <laughs> mm-hmm. My college had... Oxford has a similar thing where each college generally has a ball. Um, but it isn't as organized as that into one week. It goes sort of throughout the year. And Exeter's is at the beginning of the, the final term of the year. And we did a carnival theme. Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah, so a lot of people were taking it like Italian masquerade <gasps> and wearing masks and things. And I interpreted it like American fun fair because there were going to be carnival rides like bumper cars and big slides and things. So that's where I wore my Betsy Johnson two Oh, your dress. pink dress! And <gasps> yes, and that's why I have these knee high Converse boots because they were my ball shoes. And the um, the star hairband was also for that. Oh. These were all just an, an excuse to buy these things um, that I now wear all the time. But a lot of people were envious of my Converse shoes with, with their heels, especially in the in the grass where a lot of the ball takes yes. place because the heels sort of sink into the ground. You're always in college grounds, which is full of grass and mud. <laughs> 
Right, yeah. <laughs> but that was that was definitely something that I didn't really plan to do for convenience, but would definitely repeat. Yes, there you go. Red carpet dresses where one long it well well either get very statement flats or wear a dress long enough you can hide the fact you're wearing. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I guess so. Probably Bjork's dress, this crazy fabulous swan dress, is related to the article I think I sent it to you the other day by Simon Doonan, who mm-hmm. I absolutely love. He's one of my heroes. He's well, I think he was until very recently the head window display director at Barney's and he is a fabulous man who came from kind of working class Reading to the height of fashion his partner is Jonathan Adler the designer and he's just he writes wonderful books like glamorous eccentrics and he's just great and he he writes articles for Slate and one of his recent ones was like about award show gowns and how they're so boring and how the kind of the rise of things like, you know, the Us Weekly best dress, worst dress, this have made people very cautious. So people don't wear yeah. crazy, wacky outfits anymore. And he really he really hates staid, what he calls staid conventional goddess styles. Mm-hmm. He says they're very self conscious and guarded yeah. and they're gun shy and <laughs> he says the red carpet parade lost its sizzle and turned into Saturday night at the country club. Old school mm-hmm. goddess gowns became the norm. Perfection and conventional simplicity was the goal. And so, yeah. well, I love Simon Doonan, so I hate disagreeing with him. But I think sometimes <laughs> a gorgeous, fabulous, over-the-top ball gown is really wonderful. I do. Yeah. I mean, I agree with him in that there isn't as much variety as there used to be, it seems. Um, actually, maybe in the, in the like, um, music industry people are being more daring rather than in the in the film industry with Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, um, Nicki Minaj wearing outrageous things. That's very Whereas true. Whereas on the, on the red carpet for film award shows, you get more prom dressy dresses these days. Yeah. He sort of pins the internet as, a, as the source of this conformity. Yes, he says it's the biggest peanut gallery of all time. <laughs> yeah, but... I feel like there are a lot of people on the internet who appreciate quirky things as well. Well, not even that. I feel like on the internet, you know, I wouldn't even be aware of the Oscars dresses if I didn't have the internet. I wouldn't be able to watch it if I didn't have the internet. Right. You know. That's true. Yeah, I remember living in the UK and watching the Oscars on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are your favourite red carpet looks oh simon dean would hate me mine are like i just think <laughs> well i love i think i put it on our twitter recently it's olivia wilde's marquesa dress marquesa sorry marquesa dress that's uh-huh. your it's a gorgeous black and gold sparkled ridiculous affair and i just love it i just love fairy tale dresses i think the red carpet is the one opportunity to wear something completely outrageous and over the top and i think people should embrace right. it and i mm-hmm. think kate middleton oh i just love her She's everything I'll never be. She's like brunette and skinny and dignified, but I love her. And I think she <laughs> she always gets she always looks like a princess. And well, it's a good thing she does. <laughs> funnily because enough, she is but one. In LA, she yeah, wore she, she wore that friend. lilac Alexander McQueen dress. We'll put it. We'll put a picture in the show notes. We'll put a picture of all these dresses this in the a, show. This is a very visual um, episode. I so think it is. It's going to be, be good. Sure to check out the the gallery of dresses we'll have definitely but she it's just yeah. you know when i was a little kid i used to love beauty and the beast and i had one of those little bell dresses mm-hmm. and i used to put it on i used to dance on my mum's feet to the song at the end <laughs> and you know however cynical you get everyone wants to look fabulous whether that's your definition is in a tuxedo or in a ball gown you know everyone wants to look how they want to look when they have a little kid how they think a princess should look I, you know what I recently saw? The episode of Gossip Girl where Blair has her prom. Oh, that ridiculous and black and gold dress. Yes. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> but the cool thing about it is she made this scrapbook when she was in kindergarten about her perfect prom night. And it had the dress <laughs> and the boy. And um, I can't remember the other things. But it was a lot of different details. And Chuck Bass went behind her back and like made sure that her dress that she picked out got ruined at the dry cleaner so that... The, her dream dress could come in and uh. um, oh she got prom queen and he like fixed everything to happen 
as it did in the scrapbook. And I think that speaks to what we're saying right now is that it's it's not dressing for a certain look, but for dress- what you your own fantasy is, whether it's something you dreamed about as a child or something you just feel like, I wish I had an excuse to wear this. Yeah, it's dressing for a dream, isn't it? Yeah, dressing for a dream. There, oh, so that's you, our answer. You know how, I, how much I love quotes, Sandra. I have another John Galliano <laughs> one. It's just so perfect, though. Go for it. <laughs> I want fashion to be beautiful, escapist, aspirational. Fairy godmothers are hard to come by, so let me tell you, you shall go to the ball. Make life more of a fantasy and more of the story you imagined. Mm. I love that. It's like finding occasions to wear really... like. So I bought a ridiculous ball gown. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a picture on my site as like my tie-in post at Sparkles and Crumbs. It's, it's, my friend described it as like Barbie at a funeral. It's so over the top. It's huge. I could smuggle several dwarfs anywhere I go with this dress. But I love it. And like I find occasions to wear it. I create parties so I can wear it because I love it. That's the way to do it. That's yeah. similar to my Betsy Johnson dress. I, I bought it when it was on sale knowing I don't have an occasion for this, but I will make one. <laughs> but God damn it, I will wear it every day. <laughs> oh, and it's the one in our like fabulosity icon. Yes, it's your pink dress, which I adore. And But you know what? I remember you wearing it in Cambridge when you came to visit over, like, uh, it was your pink check shirt. And you made it oh, yeah. kind of, it was fabulous every day, but cash. you made it every day. <laughs> I think I'd struggle to make my ball gown every day. It it would knock people mm. over. I would have trouble getting yeah. in and out of doors. <laughs> well, you can just carry them with you under the skirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, well, actually, speaking of made balls, part of... So last year for our May Ball, something that was really, really fun. I think so much of getting red carpet ready is the getting ready. Mm-hmm. Weird. Um, and making it a really fun process. And they've now closed down essentially, but there used to be um, a designer dress hire company in Cambridge called GD Designer. They now just sell mm-hmm. jewellery, which is gorgeous. But it's, it's sad it's gone <laughs> because they used to have an in-house manicurist and beauty therapist. So we went and got our rental dresses and we also had, you know, a glass of champagne, had our nails done and kind of did our makeup there and did our hair there. And kind of making it an event to get ready as well is sometimes half the fun, especially if you're with really good friends. Definitely. And I usually plan like a calendar getting up to a black tie event or not even black tie, (gasps) but just to make any event sort of worth going to because you're right it's the it's the getting ready it's getting into the mindset as well if you just throw something on five minutes before going you might look just as nice as as you would if if you spent all day getting mm. ready but you're not in the, you're not preparing yourself mentally for it's the mindset for what's to come. <laughs> yeah I have a list of all the things that I want to do like if I want to try out what my makeup will look like I, I, I schedule that for a couple of days earlier um, because I don't want to panic on the day and be like, oh, actually, I need to run out and get something. You are so organized. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my idea of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. I think it's... So people always say I'm always going on a holiday. Like, well, actually, I don't go over my holiday allowance for each year in kind of my nine to five job but I just I anticipate it so much <laughs> like I talk about it so much and I build up so people feel like I'm always about to go on holiday because even a month in advance I'll be excited and that's kind of the joy of a reg- it's the kind of joy of anything getting excited about it half of it is I think yeah. but yeah have you seen Giselle's Instagram oh my gosh with her <laughs> um <laughs> getting her hair done with the baby and everything to those who haven't seen it, we will link to it. It's the most incredible picture. It is Giselle, who is fabulous. Have you? Her Instagram is just insane. It's just pictures of her like doing yoga with her baby. <laughs> it's, just, like, it's just brilliant. But it's her kind of you know, in a white bathrobe, breastfeeding her baby whilst getting her hair, nails, and makeup done. <laughs> just been like, oh, hashtag multitasking. <laughs> Amazing That's very thing. sparkles and crumbs. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were about to say very fashionably light. I was like, is it? <laughs> it's no. so over... But I love that. It's so over the top. Like, what a great way to get ready. Just having people pampering you and being like, oh, I'm also a fabulous mother too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working it. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. But yeah, but I love your idea of... So your idea for kind of 
doing a black tie event essentially was buying things that you did end up using again and again Mm -hmm. and i do that with halloween costumes as well i sort of use an occasion as an excuse to buy something outrageous and then i sometimes i i used to think oh i'm never going to wear these things again but i've since learned that i always end up um incorporating them like i was mrs lovett for halloween in high school and so i got these big big victorian heels (laughs) and thought they would just be costume shoes but ended up wearing them all the time because they're fabulous that's amazing well exactly like and also i don't think it does have to cost the world so i no. if anyone's interested hell bunny which you can buy on ebay for easily under 100 pounds is gorgeous they do fabulous kind of ridiculous over-the-top ball gown style dresses they and do ball gowns oh yeah like one of my ball gowns was hell bunny i got it from the cambridge really? marketplace for like 60 pounds awesome I just have their galactic unicorn dress. Which I love. <laughs> that, that I wouldn't wear to a black tie event, but yeah, they're sort of vintage inspired. But so I've got kind of a, yeah, shin length, kind of lower shin length, big black over the top, tall skirted, black velvet on top, big bow at the waist, tucking it in, ball gown. And it was, you know, kind of 60 quid from the marketplace and you can get it for 45 quid on eBay. Like they're gorgeous. You can look for, and vintage as well like that's yeah it's really easy to find stuff vintage or um second hand because a lot of people will only wear these things once and then donate them well that's um the... <laughs> yeah like there's a, a chain um in the boston area called second time around where the idea is if you want to wear something different to each occasion you wear it once and then you can donate it to this place and then buy something that someone else has only worn once Oh, I love that. Sort of like a, yeah, a, a chic secondhand place. Sh- they're very, like, uh, yeah, upmarket. Um, yeah. Like. <laughs> love. So in 2012, I'm pretty sure, maybe it was 2012, Natalie Portman wore vintage Christian Dior. Mm. And I think this was, let me have a look. Yes, it was the 2012 Oscars, in fact. And she wore this gorgeous strapless red polka dot vintage Dior. And it was, you know. That's because she's the best. That's because she, yeah. She is your celebrity, like, she would play you in your life. <laughs> I know. Yes. Flashback to whatever episode that was, but that was an amazing <laughs> Yeah. And she was probably the face of Dior at that point, right? She was, yes, she was their ambassador. Yeah. I think she still is. She's still doing their ads, but she looked, she looked absolutely glorious. <laughs> And even if you already have a dress that you want to repeat, there are other things you can do to accent it to make it look different. Like, did you see Helen Mirren's pink hair? Yes. <laughs> She's amazing. I love her. Yeah, what a fabulous lady. This was, I think this was last year. She was on the red carpet at the BAFTAs, mm-hmm. and her hair was this cotton candy pink. Candy gloss, yeah. Yeah, candy floss. And she said she saw Sophie from America's Next Top Model with pink hair, and she... Sophie's like in her 20s and she like she said it looked cool on her so I thought I'd try it too and I was like Helen you rock oh she's so fabulous <laughs> or you can accessorize mm, I put I tucked fresh flowers into kind of the big bow waistband of my dress to make it a bit less gothic because oh, it was hell buddy <laughs> yeah I mean going back to our little black dress episode yeah you can have a humongous black dress as well like this ball gown <laughs> and it's just as convertible <laughs> it wasn't it was a black dress it wasn't little <laughs> <laughs> yeah a different kind of black dress um, amazing yeah i think my yeah. favorite accessory on the red carpet has been um i can't really pronounce her name quaven johnny wallace the little girl who is in beast of the southern wild she um Oh, gosh, how old was she? She was, like, seven years old or something ridiculous. She's really little, isn't she? She's yeah. tiny. Um, but, again, someone who was really embracing her age, and she would wear um, really nice red carpet dresses and carry a puppy purse with them. <laughs> She's so, so adorable. They're, like, these little, yeah, these um, stuffed animal puppies. 
with a strap on it to wear it like a purse and she just can put her little things in there and she would go on lots of different talk shows and eventually leading up to the oscars she would have a different one for each event she's so but on the on the kind of flip side helen mirren completely not acting her age right essentially and kind of breaking all the rules and so do both just do what you want to (laughs) without hurting anyone that's a fabulous (laughs) two-way As long as your red carpet dress is not offend, well, not offend anyone. As long as your red carpet dress is not causing anyone any physical harm, you'll probably be fine. Well, hopefully, we've given you some food for thought with our red carpet discussion, and we will be posting up those pictures of the dresses on our show notes at fabulosity. That's t a dot com. But before we close off, do we have any other business? Any correspondence over the last week? Oh, we do have an interesting comment um, from Fashionably Light. There was a girl called Julie, spelled J-O-O-L-E-Y, who was replying to my Why I'm Zandra discussion, um, where I'm talking about how how you should feel like your name. And she said, I quite get you. I'm not a Julie, spelled J-U-L-I-E. I know it sounds the same, but it feels different, like Anne with an E versus Anne without an E. Um... And it's like it's like Anna Green Gables, right? <laughs> when she's like, no, it's Anne with an E, and you know, mean or Marissa. It's like it doesn't make any difference. She's like, but it does. <laughs> it can mean something to me if there's an E. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and I think her her name is very funky, and whereas Julie is very classical. Yeah, they, oh, I love kind of her yeah. spelling. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, well, please do give us your feedback on your favorite red carpet dress. Do you agree with any of our picks of our favorites? Do you absolutely hate them? (laughs) Let us know. (laughs) And what do you think of the, um, the article about red carpet dressing getting too conservative? Mm. How do you feel? Do you you agree with Simon? I bet Simon Dunan would love some debate. (laughs) (laughs) He's quite feisty. He'll handle it. (laughs) And, well, I guess, well, let us know on Twitter, Fabulosity, or Facebook. Um, pop us an email at fabulosity, T-E-A party at gmail.com. And I think all that's left to do is announce next week's episode, which will be the same time, Friday's English Tea Time. And next week's episode is in which we discuss brunch. Just brunch. I think that says it all. Brunch. It's a less elaborate title than usual, but brunch says it all. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're listening to us on iTunes, we'd really appreciate if we could get a review and rating from you if you enjoyed the episode. Um, And if anyone has any topics that you'd like us to discuss, we're always looking for new ideas. So uh, do reach out to us. We love hearing from you. Yay. (laughs) Speak to us. Yay. (laughs) We'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao. (laughs)